Right now on Denver 7 News at 6 a.m., a tragic trend leading to more heartbreak for Colorado families. Multiple lives claimed by fentanyl. I'm Denver 7's Jessica Crawford. What one young victim's family has to say about their tragedy. Plus, all new this morning, a scare in the skies. New pictures show why a flight was forced to make an emergency landing in Denver. And President Biden has a plan to save us money at the pump. If we want lower gas prices, we need to have a more oil supply right now. We're taking a 360 in-depth look at the steps he's taking and how much prices are expected to drop. We're still hanging on below $4 a gallon Barely. on average yeah. in Colorado. <laughs> Every little bit will help, though. Yes. Good morning. I'm Nicole Brady. And I'm Brian Sanders. Good Friday morning to you. Uh, this is just as road trips are, are really starting yeah. to come back. The weather's warming up. It's going to be uh, nice and sunny for us again today, Lisa. You know, I saw a funny uh, quote yesterday. You know, we women have been preparing for this. We run on E all the time. So <laughs> yeah. We have got what is going to be, you're right, a beautiful afternoon. But this morning, the roads could be a little wet in spots. If you're uh, heading up into the mountains, you're going to find some snow still falling there, wet, maybe even slushy over the the high mountain passes down across the plains. It looks a little more impressive here on satellite and radar. A lot of what we're seeing right now is just the cloud cover. You'll see that low line cloud cover here in Denver, and there may be a sprinkle or two early this morning would lead to some wet, maybe damp roads uh, across the eastern plains, but that's going to clear out more sunshine by 12 o'clock. We'll be at 52 degrees by that point and then closer to 60 this afternoon. Denver right around 58 to near 60 today in the mountains, 30s and 40s. Quite a bit warmer tomorrow, uh, beautiful on Saturday, another cold front on Sunday. So I'll show you the difference on our Super 7 day as we head into the weekend and what to expect and where we'll see a little bit more snow this coming weekend. I have seen a few sprinkles across some of the cameras here on the north side of town. Uh, this is the camera up at I-25 at 136th Avenue. It doesn't look too bad for us. Looks basically dry here on I-25. Uh, so maybe just some very light sprinkles. It's a little bit more wet into the high country, really from Georgetown West, and you're going to find some uh, snow and wet roads and slush roads up that way. Take a look at the uh, overall drive. You see the map looks pretty good for us. We did have a crash over here at 56 and Tower Road. It's all clear if you hear about it and say the intersection still blocked. It's not. You can see that it is open now as they did clear up that crash. The rest of the drive looks pretty good, whether it's to or from the airport out there to the north side of town, not seeing any speed delays because of the weather that you might be seeing here this morning. A pretty good looking drive for the most part for most of us. Well, new this morning, some terrifying pictures just into our newsroom show the reason why a plane had to make an emergency landing in Denver. Take a look at this. It's the plane's windshield, and you can see it completely shattered during the flight. Uh, this was a Delta flight on its way to Washington, D.C. from Salt Lake City. A passenger on the plane took this picture of the windshield. He says the crew told passengers the window just shattered spontaneously. In a statement, Delta Airlines said the flight, quote, experienced a maintenance issue mid-flight, and our team worked quickly to accommodate customers on a new plane, and we sincerely apologize for the delay and inconvenience. Well, speaking of scary situations, we know parents are paying attention to this one. More Colorado families are dealing with heartbreaking losses because of fentanyl laced drugs. The parents of a one year old girl are now facing charges for her death after she was found with fentanyl in her system. And then within hours, we learned about two local teenagers who died from fentanyl poisoning. We want to bring in Denver 7's Jessica Crawford this morning because the parents of one of those teens has a message to others before it's too late. That's right. Sadly, Alameda High School has announced the death of student Kimberly Jimenez Figueroa. Her parents are saying that her death is linked to fentanyl and they're hoping that sharing this information could save other lives. Counselors are going to be on campus today for those students who are grieving. Hard to imagine what those students and those parents are going through. And that is not the only recent fentanyl death. Hours after that was announced, the Highlands Ranch High School confirmed the death of Ty Burns, who was recently enrolled there as an 11th grader. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office told Denver 7 that it's still an open investigation, but investigators do believe the 17 year old's death is the result of a drug overdose and that fentanyl is involved. Plus, we just learned that this terrible drug did claim the life of a Brighton toddler back in January. Now her parents are facing charges. Prosecutors say Alonzo Montoya and Nicole Cassius did drugs in the home both before and after that baby's death. And the little girl's blood contained 10 times the amount of fentanyl that can kill 
an adult. So there are measures that are trying to be put in place right now to try to prevent some of these fentanyl deaths. A bill has been introduced by local lawmakers to try to save lives, but some are concerned that it won't do enough. Live in Denver, I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. Yeah, and it's not just here in Colorado, Jessica. Uh, deadly overdoses caused by fentanyl have skyrocketed across the country in recent years. A new study from the DEA shows just how widespread the problem is. The study found the number of illicit pills containing fentanyl seized by U.S. law enforcement jumped by more than 4,000 percent over the last three years. The DEA says more than 42,000 fentanyl lace pills were seized in 2018. That number jumped to more than 2 million last year. Well, in Ukraine this morning, it appears a humanitarian corridor is now open in the city of Mariupol, allowing some 2,000 people to evacuate. But there is an estimated 100,000 people still trapped there, and many have been living with little food or water for several weeks now. Ukrainian officials say Russian forces have not been allowing aid or supplies to reach the city. Russian forces, meanwhile, have handed back control of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant to Ukraine. It's been occupying the site since February. There are reports Russian troops may have suffered radiation sickness after digging trenches in contaminated areas. NATO's chief warns Russian forces are not withdrawing but just repositioning. They're believed to be regrouping in Belarus and planning to launch more attacks. A couple from Castle Rock is on the Poland-Ukraine border helping Ukrainians fleeing the war. Ralph and Deborah Yatsko are volunteering with World Central Kitchen, a group that's helping to feed refugees on both sides of the border. They tell us the work has been exhausting, but nothing compared to what the people they're helping have been through. You see the, the looks on people's faces when you, when you give them uh, some food or drink when they've had such a long journey and they're exhausted. You could see some relief, you know, come over them. And that's that's very, you know, fulfilling to see. Yeah, they say some people wait 10 hours at the border to get across. And the Yatskos are planning to return to Colorado next week. The Boulder County Sheriff's Office says it could take several more months before we know exactly what caused the Marshall Fire. Investigators are working with experts from around the country right now to analyze any evidence. That includes following up on nearly 200 tips from the community and interviewing victims and witnesses. Once the investigation is complete, evidence will be shared with the district attorney's office to determine if charges are warranted. So while the cause is under investigation, XL Energy is facing a lawsuit claiming the utility company is responsible for the Marshall Fire. The lawsuit filed by an unnamed couple and a Boulder-based company alleges XL power lines and equipment were factors in spreading the fire. We talked to a lawyer who filed the lawsuit. He says he plans to prove XL was negligent. The main detail is we've, we've uncovered witnesses who actually witnessed the origin of the fire and those witnesses have not only pinpointed the fire but they've pinpointed the location uh, underneath power poles that were maintained by XL Energy that are the property of XL Energy. XL meanwhile says its equipment in the area was properly maintained and inspected and says the company has seen no evidence it ignited the fire. The Loveland Police Department is facing a new lawsuit this morning. It accuses officers of pulling over and citing or arresting potentially drunk drivers who are then later cleared of the charges. This body camera video is from January of 2020. Harris Elias says he was driving home from a dinner party at his girlfriend's house. He was pulled over, arrested and cited for drunk driving. Around two months later, blood tests showed there was nothing in his system. Now he wants to make sure police departments don't have any kind of incentives for certain arrests. It takes a lot to stand in integrity and say, hey, I made a mistake. And it's what I would expect from a seven year old and it's what I expect from the chief of police. Every day in America, district attorneys dismiss cases. That happens. That does not mean that the person arrested was falsely arrested or unlawfully arrested. The lawsuit is looking for one and a half million dollars in damages for Elias and reforms for the Loveland Police Department. The attorney says next step is for the city to file an answer to the complaint. An alert for people in Denver this morning. The sweet sweeping. This is a really hard one to say, actually. Street sweeping program. Uh, returns today. If you're new to the metro, during the first week of every month, street sweepers come by and clear the streets. 
If you're parked on the street during that time, you'll be ticketed. So you can find your street schedule on those signs posted all over or on the city's website. Not so sweet if you find a ticket on your windshield. Uh, we want to thank you for supporting this year's Feed Colorado Food Drive. Our Denver 7 call center raised $5,000 yesterday thanks to your generous support. And we also got a match from our thrift stores. And every dollar you donated will help buy food for the City Harvest Food Bank, Meals on Wheels, and many other programs operated by Volunteers of America. So thank you once again, Lisa. Yeah, that is awesome. Now at 610, we have a pretty nice end to the week. There's some cloud cover out there, even a few sprinkles possible early this morning. Skies will clear out, though. We will see more sunshine. So if you're out walking the dog here by midday, it'll start to warm up by that point. We're in the low 40s now. We'll be in the low 50s by noon. Upper 50s for highs today, about 10 to 12 degrees warmer tomorrow. Details on a beautiful Saturday forecast coming up. We have a little fire burning right now on uh, along I-25, the northbound side between Alameda and 6th Avenue. You can see from Air Tracker 7 some of the smoke that's coming up. A little bit of flames left over just a little bit ago. It was actually flaming up pretty big. It looks like it was through some of the grass and some trash that's right here. There's actually a fence right here separating the highway from this grassy area. So the firefighters are getting a handle on it. Shouldn't spread over to the highway, but they do have have one lane closed between Alameda and 6th Avenue. So obviously that's going to be slowing down traffic a bit trying to go across downtown. Well, did that IKEA shelf you built yourself not turn out how you expected? Now there's a way you can sell it back even after you have put it together. <laughs> Plus, a sign summer is near. The popular venues ready to kick off their outdoor concert season. 